You know how last week I showed visual style prompting? Well, this week I've got the perfect companion for you. IP Composition Adapter. Just as the name suggests, this model is for image composition. Scrolling down their page, you should easily be able to see what's going on here. We've got some SDXL examples, starting there with a slightly badgerized hugging face. Maybe you're thinking, oh, this is just like Canny or a depth control net. Well, not really, as scrolling down, we get to see a guy hugging a tiger, because that's a perfectly normal thing to prompt for. Seriously, though, it isn't. Don't use any type of cats in your prompts, people. Oh, sorry. I mean, uh, you can see the composition is similar, but the guy is facing the other way and, uh, you know, things are different, which Canny wouldn't normally do. A few more SDXL examples there too, with a person standing and holding a thing, a face, another one there holding a stick. And as we scroll down even further, there are some Stable Diffusion 1.5 examples doing exactly the same sort of thing as well. As you can see, it's a lot less strict and imposing than something like a control net to instead give you a similar composition, all without having to type a single prompt. Being a model, it should work in anything which supports IP adapter, such as the automatic 1111 and Forge web UIs, though I'm going to be using Comfy UI because I like making workflows. To use it, you'll just need to download the model to the usual place for your chosen interface. For Comfy UI, that's the model's IP adapter directory. And for automatic 1111, that's the model's control net directory. Right, let's get into this and start with a bog standard workflow. Talking of workflows, if you want to use the exact same ones I'm using in this video, then they're already available to the wonderful nerdling level Patreons. Easy peasy bit to start with here, just so we're all on the same page as to what's going on. I'm just going to disable this composition group here. There we go, bypass. Let's generate and see what that image looks like, just as a normal SD 1.5 image. And there you go, we've got an image. And if I was to generate another one, is it going to be the same image? Well, no, it isn't. It's going to be random each time because I haven't got anything in my prompt. Turning the composition adapter on, however, means I no longer get those random images, but instead I now get images that are very similar to the one that I have provided there. You can see I've got a person, there's a little bit of a desert and a blue sky and some mountains in the background. So it's not exactly the same like you'd get with a canny or a depth. It's just taking the composition of it and going, yeah, there you go, it, it, it looks something like this. And I haven't had to use a positive prompt at all yet either. How cool is that. Totally different style though. Of course, the composition is great. I'll touch on style in a minute, but like we saw in the earlier examples, you can use prompting to change certain aspects of your composition. Rather than an empty prompt, you could do something like uh, a bearded man in order to get a guy there instead. Forest will replace that desert with a forest. Or you could do something like buy a lake, and yes, you've guessed it, that will turn that desert into a lake, each time keeping the actual composition pretty similar to the guide image which you have provided. If you've used IP adapter before, you'll know some models have a stronger impact than others, meaning the weight value is something you'll have to adjust. This composition model isn't as strong as some of the others I've tried, so do be aware of that. I've often found myself turning the weight up instead of down in some cases. I find that values below 0.6 will barely match the composition at all. And once you hit a weight of around 1.5, then things may start to look a little bit messy. One is typically just right, though sometimes going a bit higher can help, depending on what it is you're trying to achieve. You can change end at as well, and it even seems good around 0.5 with a weight of 1. With the composition sorted, style is probably something you'll be looking to do next. For that, you can do all the normal things like prompt for it, like if you wanted a more watercolour look, then you could just throw watercolour into your prompt, or perhaps a more black and white sketch style is more your thing. 
Another easy change you could make is the model you're using. Up until now, I've been using Real Cartoon 3D, so changing to something like Analog Madness, along with a more photorealistic style prompt, will also change the outputs quite considerably. Does it work with all the usual stuff such as control nets and whatnot? Well, yes it does, it's just a model for IP adapter. And what better to go with a composition adapter than a style adapter? This time here I'm using the SDXL composition model adapter along with an SDXL checkpoint and the visual style prompting from my previous video. Another thing to note is their suggested guidance scale, which is way down at three. Now this one I'm not too sure about, as they say it applies more to SDXL models than to Stable Diffusion 1.5, uh, yet for me it seemed to be the other way around. If I just go back to that 1.5 workflow for a second, and here I'm using a guidance scale of seven, uh, well, to me, that looks to be going too hard on the colours and so should definitely be lowered. However, over here in SDXL land with a guidance scale of 7 and, well, that looks absolutely fine to me. Now, the other thing I found is the lower the guidance scale is, the more the style will come through over the composition in this particular example. So here I've dropped the guidance scale from 7 to 3. And I'm sure you can see the difference there. Rescaling will change these values, of course. So say I slap a rescale node in and then just connect it up. Now I can easily double that seven up to 14 and yet still get a fairly reasonable image. Now this isn't completely magic, of course. You can't just slap any old pictures in there and hope that it will come out brilliantly like in this example. So here I'm quoting for a graffiti art style rodent and yet I've given it sort of three pins and a little bowling ball and in the style I've got a painting. So the style in my prompt isn't matching the style I'm sending in in the picture and the composition is just really weird. It does its best, as you can see, it is pretty cool. It's got the people there, it's got some faces, they've got their rodent ears, so it tries really well, but perhaps not exactly the best collection of different things to try to merge together. What I found tends to work best is if everything is sort of coherent. So here I've got smiling and happy, because my composition is of a person, so the prompts relate to that. Smiling is something that a person can do. And then in the style, I've got a pattern. So those things, I think, tend to work together really well when all the bits work together and complement each other. There you have it then, both style and composition, just using images, and you can guide it with prompts too. Certainly something I've been having a lot of fun with, as you can tell. Want to know more about the visual style prompting? Well, just click the link for the next video.